You're watching News 10 ABC at 9 a.m. Welcome back, everyone. Cold weather, it means runny nose season has arrived. Dryness can also be a big problem for people, and that's why we have Dr. Gavin Setson here, the president of Albany ENT and Allergy Services, to give us some uh, much-needed advice. Thank you for joining us, doctor. Thank you, Stephanie. A pleasure to be here. And uh, as you point out, the cold weather season brings with it a variety of ear, nose, and throat mm -hmm. problems. Um, in the field, we call this nosebleed season. Unfortunately, there's a much higher tendency towards nasal dryness mm -hmm. and potential for nosebleeds, oftentimes in kids as well as adults. Uh, one in seven Americans will have a nosebleed in their lifetime, which is much higher than one might anticipate, and this is definitely the season. And we can talk about methods to limit that potential. Um, as well as a variety of other things, indoor heating season, allergy related issues, dusts and mm -hmm. dust mites and indoor mold and the like, which increase nasal congestion, uh, difficulty breathing through the nose, nasal drainage and a variety of other things, potential for sinus infections, asthma related issues and a variety of upper respiratory conditions as well. You're making a very long list right now. There are so many problems. Once things get cold, you can be runny, you can be dry. But what is the actual reason behind that kind of dryness we feel in our sinus cavity and also in our noses? So the nasal lining, the nasal mucosa, when you think about the nasal bone, the septum separating the left and right mm -hmm. sides, as well as the mucosa that lines the rest of the upper airway, it's very delicate, it's very thin, and it's very sensitive to drying because we move a lot of air through our nose and mouth particularly. And so a deviated septum or inflammation from allergy narrows the airway. Mm. You get turbulent airflow, increased dryness and crusting, and that leaves you with a sensation of nasal congestion and stuffiness. Maybe more mouth breathing, more snoring, impacting sleep. Sleep impacts daytime function and a whole variety of secondary problems that can arise from that. Now, what are something that people can do about this issue? Because it's something that really does impact your day. You can be picking up your tissue constantly, dabbing your nose. I know I do it all the time during the commercial break. Absolutely, and runny nose is a very particular problem in this uh, cold weather. They refer to it as skier's nose. You step mm -hmm. out in cold weather, your nose runs. Right. <laughs> For some people, you, one sits down to eat and their nose runs. That's also a non-allergic rhinitis, chronic rhinitis, or basomotor rhinitis. And there are a variety of nasal sprays that one can use, steroid nasal sprays, something called ipotropium, antihistamine nasal sprays. But there are also a variety of natural remedies that can be very helpful in that regard as well. So symptomatic management, very important. Now, as we're talking about these home remedies, I actually brought some home remedies right to the set for us because I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding these three things. The first thing I want to talk about is a humidifier. So when you're talking about this dryness from the heat causing issues, what do you think about a recommendation for a humidifier? Is it something that people should purchase? Absolutely. I'm a big advocate of humidifiers, particularly during the heating season. Uh, as long as one does an over-humidifier, run the humidity around 50 to 55 percent. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't do that, and that leads to the drying. If you excessively humidify, mold indoors can be a problem, as well as dust mites, and that can exacerbate allergy issues. So, you know, measuring your humidity but running a humidifier during the heating season, invaluable. And I know we're about to go to commercial break, but I have to ask about these two other things. You, you already mentioned kind of the nasal sprays that you, people can do, but what about the neti pot? Lots of controversy surrounding the neti pot. Some of my sure. coworkers were saying it's gross. I think it's extraordinarily helpful. Huh? One of the most beneficial things one can do, think of it as hand washing for the nose and sinuses flushing out things one inhales that they're allergic to, viral particles, bacteria, keeping the mucus well moisturized, and it's generally something I recommend to every patient every day year-round, particularly during the heating season. Very hygienic, you can wash the units, you can replace them, you can put them in a dishwasher, neti pots and the like, just a mechanism for delivering saline to wash out the nose. Very helpful. Dr. Gavin, thank you so much for joining us. I hope everybody uh, has some help with their nose now this season. 928 right now.